Hey guys, what's up? Stark here. Today I'm going to go over this sort of effect that it's you could do with lens flares. Now, I want to start off by saying that this is not a perfect way or an ideal situation in which you would do this. Uh, this actually works way better if you're doing render passes and you have mats that you could already use that you rendered out. However, not everybody has you know render passes, so this is just going to be a cool little little trick type so what we're gonna actually do is we're just gonna have we're gonna add this just a very modest lens flare on here because as you can see it's daytime and you can do it at nighttime but i have this footage and this is like a perfect shot because it's just a circle it's one light so let's just dive in to it so what i'm gonna first do is just make two null objects and we're gonna call this call this one our light and then we're gonna call this ground truth or just ground and the reason for the ground is we need to track a ground truth that is not moving with the camera and which you'll see why later so first things first we're just gonna turn these guys off and we're just gonna do a very simple track of the the light and i'll speed through this not that it takes that long but you don't to sit here and watch we'll just there we go this should work we'll edit our target to our light all right and then track it all right as you can see it's sticking so we'll hit apply x and y only we'll hit okay and then we're going to do another track and we're going to want to pick something in the background so it doesn't really matter there's a lot of high contrast spots so Maybe this guy right here. This isn't that important. This is more to give sort of a motion to the lens flare. So I'm just going to repeat our whole little thing here again. So I don't know. What's like a good spot? We'll just do right there and then edit target, ground truth, OK. And we'll just do it backwards. Now we're going to hit apply. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now we have our tracks that are indeed sticking. Okay. Now what we're going to do is create a new black solid. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to kind of use this to our advantage in another scene as we use this as a mat. If, one of the things in my videos, if you haven't caught on, is that most things in compositing are either switching a channel or switching around a mat. So it's pretty much what it is. So let's just turn this off right now. And then we're just going to go ahead and I'll turn off a uh, light. And we're just going to try to find from a center point something like this, because we want just the light, that bright area. OK, turn this on. We're going to have to subtract it. All right. Go ahead, we'll attach it to the light, and then as we go forward, you should see this. Now the only thing is, obviously it's it gets too big, so we could just cut into our mat. So we'll just hit M there, do a negative mask expansion. And that should be fine, honestly. We should get so now we did that, we're just gonna duplicate this. And then we're going to go ahead and pre-comp all of these guys. And then pre-comp, and we'll call this our light mat. Awesome. So let's go into our light mat. And we're just going to edit this light to bring it down to a black and white image and color correct it. So color correction, let's just do tint. That's fine. I always do tint just so it's black and white because it's easier to see, especially with my eyes. So then go into here, our levels. And let's just try to squeeze out like that. We just want this guy right here. And these two little guys right there shouldn't really do any problem. Okay, now the next step, and it's actually pretty much the last step, is to add a box blur. Box blur, not Gaussian blur. And then you have to be very careful because it's kind of sensitive to this. And this is just so that we could kind of 
have a little bit of fall off on here. Uh, one of the things you could do, I'm not going to do it in this, is you could actually just pre-comp this again so then that you only have a mat and then you could actually add an inner shadow if you kind of want to almost like barn doors, control the, the light. But for this, not a thing to worry about. Okay, so I'm just going to turn down this guy. The opacity. You'll see that, okay, we have this light. And everywhere else, it's black, all right? Now, if you haven't used optical flares, let's call this flares. Okay. And then optical flares. This may be obvious to a lot of people, but maybe not everybody. We're going to use the, not 2D, but luminance, okay? Our source layer is going to be our light mat. Now you're going to see, let's go to on transparent. Turn this guy off because we don't need it. And then there you go. Now you have <laughs> this crazy, terrible thing. But no, we're not going to use that. I made a, again, the, the whole purpose here of this one especially is to keep it kind of modest. I'm just going to put this to uh, blending mode add. It's not really going to show any difference. I don't care if it clamps it, whatever. But I made a custom one earlier stark cycle light and basically just going to drop it in here okay now there's only one more step and this is what the ground truth is so we're just going to alt click on our center position and we're going to attach it to this all right all right there you go so you can see the bouncing and stuff right and the whole point of that is to kind of give us this little bumpiness that we're getting on the road just to give some realism. And you can see the flare is not, it's not this streaking flare, but it's dynamic. You can see that it changes with the, the brightness of this guy, or not this guy, this light. So if he actually turned and it was no longer visible, you're not gonna, the light would shut off and it would fade by itself. So this is really cool if you have, let's say you're in a dark scene, you have flashlights and you, you want flares, but they're not making it. Now don't go overboard with it. Don't, you know, too much because it tends to look super compy, but just something very, so I want something subtle here because it's directly at the camera. It's daytime. It's not going to have this insane, like J.J. Abrams Star Trek flair. Okay. So that's it, guys. This is super simple. It's very effective for things. You could do it on so many things. So I hope this helps you guys out.